keeps the engines running, Mike. I don't suppose Jimmy and Dr. Mika will be long now. Right, Professor. Switch all controls over to me, will you? We won't need the console today. Not if you're all coming along. It will be crowded, I know, Mike. <laughs> and you will have to behave yourself, Mitch. With five of us in supercars, there won't be any room for funny business. <laughs> the controls are all yours, Mike. I'm going to see how Dr. Bika is getting on. Uh, uh, plates, cups, one uh, broken, I see. A uh, teapot. A uh, teapot. Now, uh, where's the teapot? I will not be fobbed off with coffee or mint tulips or carbonated beverages, I tell you. Tea. That's the only stuff. But, Dr. Beaker, where are we going to put all this? Supercar's only got a makeshift back seat. Oh, uh, we'll find room, uh, uh, perhaps even under the seat. Ah, uh, there you are, Professor. I can't find the teapot. Kettle, yes. Teapot, uh, yes, no. Good heavens, Bigger, are we going to take all that? Well, uh, I had thought, uh, since we are going for a day in the mountains, uh, there is a, a particular ice fall I want to see. Uh, a frozen um, it, a waterfall, that is. I hear you, Doc. And I might have known you'd combine business with pleasure. Where is this waterfall? Yes, Peter. And what's that you've got there? A piece of speleological equipment. In short, a miner's helmet. Uh, this ice fall, so the books say, is uh, uh, underground, in a cave, that is to say. Underground? How far underground? No, oh, not far, I assure you. A uh, mere half mile or so. A mere half mile or so? Underground? Why is it that Dr. Baker can turn the simplest outing into some sort of dangerous safari? Oh, well. All aboard! We've ever had a real day out all together in supercar, isn't it, Mitch? <laughs> now, please, Dr. Beaker, you know what you said. Now, wait till after lunch, huh? My dear fellow, there's no cause for alarm, I assure you. I propose merely to make a preliminary uh, survey, um, reconnoiter, as it were, before lunch. Then I can show you all uh, the way afterwards. It's too dangerous, Dr. Beaker. You could get lost like that. But I assure you, no. Experienced cave explorers, uh, uh, such as myself, for instance, use string. To keep your pants up with, I suppose. As a guide, my dear fellow, as a guide. One ties it to some convenient point at the cavern mouth and unwinds it on the way in. Then one rewinds it uh, on the way out. Simple. Well, okay, Dr. Beaker. But let's make sure the string's well tied this end. Oh, it's secure, I assure you. Quite secure. I should not be longer than, um, uh, 20 minutes or so. Ah, I expect Beaker is wanting to explore the cave straight away, as usual. <laughs> I heard Mitch just then. I'll leave him alone for now. He'll be here soon enough when it gets to dishing out the food. Interesting. Most interesting. There's no doubt that this is the cavern mentioned by McGann in his book, Cave Treasures of the North American Continent. <laughs> uh, well, so far, so good. Uh, let us uh, penetrate a little deeper. Spinning like a Ariadne. 
<laughs> Our line as we go. <laughs> Getting near it soon. I didn't mention any side passages. In any case, he found it easily enough. It's getting on for lunchtime. Dr. Beaker said he'd be about 20 minutes or so. Doesn't give him much longer. Oh, don't worry so much, Mike. What can happen to him? He's not likely to try to force his way if it looks dangerous and he can't miss his way out. Why don't you just relax? Relax? He's so absent-minded he could knock himself out walking into one of those icicle things. Stalactites. Most interesting if a, a trifle hard. I really must be more careful. Now I ought to be somewhere near by now. <laughs> I wonder if that could be the main chamber. But Gan's directions were not very clear. But in any case, I still have my thread, so I, I can't go wrong. It really is too bad of him. The trouble is, when Baker becomes interested in something, he gets too busy to notice if he's hungry or not. Oh, remarkable. Oh, most, most remarkable. McGann was quite right. Now, let me see. All I have to do is follow the string back to the entrance. And I think, I really think, I should have worked up quite an appetite for lunch. Yes, remarkable. <laughs> now, what was that, I wonder? <laughs> And another thing, Professor, where's Mitch? I don't hear him. And when I can't hear him, I think he's up to something. I didn't see where he went. Well, anyway, I'm getting too hungry to wait around for Dr. Beaker. If he has found that ice fall he's looking for, he'll have forgotten all about us, so we won't see him for an hour or so. <laughs> well, now who's a fool? Myself, nor you, 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 you uh, stone age brute. Give me that string. <laughs> Oh, well, it can't be helped. It's going to make the problem of getting out a little more difficult, that's all. Which way did I come in, I, I wonder? <laughs> yes, a great help you are. Well, as I'm here, it would be a, a pity to leave without uh, studying this phenomenon. Hmm, yes. No doubt about it. Ice, rather than mineral deposit. <laughs> uh, precisely, uh, precisely, my dear fellow. No doubt only radiometrical analysis could tell us how old these uh, formations are. Now, I wonder if it's at all possible to get behind the fall itself. At uh, one end, perhaps. <laughs> would like to see it. Imagine a frozen waterfall. That must really be something. Yes, Jimmy, I should imagine you are right. I'm quite looking forward to having Dr. Beaker show it to us. <laughs> oh, I really must get back and tell the others. Oh, professor! I don't know, Jimmy, but it sounds like trouble. Can't hear 
anything now. Beaker! No, nothing. Sounded to me as though the roof fell in. Mike, didn't you say Dr. Beaker tied some string somewhere around here so he could find his way out again? Yeah, it's right there by you. No, it's not. There's no string anywhere here. You know what that means. Mitch. That's right. He must have followed Dr. Beaker into the cave and taken the end with him. We're in trouble now, and plenty of it. My dear Mike, what do you suggest we do? I don't know, Professor. I just don't know. Most likely thing is that a bit of the roof's fallen in. And without the string to guide us, we can't even find our way in to see. But Dr. Beaker may have been hurt. We've got to get in and find him. It was most unfortunate. Really most unfortunate. How extremely careless of me. Oh, I hope, indeed I trust, that the drawing has not been damaged by the fall. No, still quite intact. That's the main thing. But the fact still remains that I find myself in a most unfortunate position. And there is no means of getting word to the others. We should have kept an eye on Mitch. He's always getting into trouble. It's not his fault, Professor. It's ours. Mine, mostly. I should never have agreed to let Dr. Beaker go in there by himself. The trouble is, he's always so darn self-confident. Should I go and fetch a flashlight, Mike? We'll have to try and find him. Sure, Jimmy, you do that. Though I don't see there's much hope of finding him. We don't even know how far in the ice fall was. Now let me see. I must make uh, some sort of assessment of the situation. It, I, it uh, appears that I can't get out. And since Mitch brought the string in with him, the others can't get in either. Which makes things awkward. Uh, most awkward. Without the string, nobody can do anything. All set, Professor? It's a pity I can't copy Beaker's trick, because we haven't got any more string. I hope you know what you're doing, Mike. But I know we can't just stand around here and argue. I only wish I knew the way. But I guess I can manage. Hey, look. It's Mitch. Here, Mitch. How'd you find your way out, Mitch? <laughs> Shows that he didn't need any string to guide him anyway. Probably did it by scent. Well, anyway, if he found his way out, he can find his way back in again. Sure he can. Come on, Mitch. Let's go. I'll go in and size things up. If all goes well, I'll be back in a few minutes. At least we'll know what's happened to Dr. Beaker. Curious. The artist appears to have used two pigments. Uh, ochre and uh, red of some sort. It's in addition to the normal carbon black. Beaker! Now, is that Mike's voice? Hardly likely, I should have thought. <laughs> Probably an acoustic deception. Beaker! That may have been what started off the fall. If there was one, I'd better go steady, Mitch. <laughs> and you keep quiet, too. Beaker! Over here, Mike. Coming, Dr. Beaker. <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, satisfactory, my dear fellow. Quite satisfactory. How did you find your way in? Mitch brought me. He didn't need your string. Oh, uh, there seems to be some difficulty uh, about getting out. Don't worry, Dr. Beaker. We'll have you out of here in no time. Now, just hold on a minute. I'm going back to the others outside. I'll be back soon. Uh, no immediate hurry, my dear chap. I am um, uh, quite comfortable. Except that I'm bound to say it's a little Stuffy in here. I wonder if Mike's found Dr. Beaker yet. Just be patient, Jimmy. Hey, there's Mitch. Then at least whatever Mike has found cannot be far underground. He hasn't been gone very long. And here's Mike. What's happened, Mike? Now listen, here's the picture. Dr. Beaker's not hurt, but he's trapped behind a fall of ice. How much ice, Mike? Well, it's hard to tell. A couple of tons at least. I could just about see his light through the stuff. Hey, Mike, you know that in cases of emergency like this, we leave it up to you. Well... We've got supercar. Supercar? The way I see it is this. Dr. Beaker seems to have sealed himself in behind a solid wall of ice. We can't shift it. There's too much of it. So we melt it. Melt it? Yeah, with supercar's jets. Now let's get going. But Mike, you mean you want to take supercar into the cave? That's just what I do mean, Professor. It's not as impossible as it sounds. He's about a quarter of a mile in and it's wide all the way. Now come on, let's get going. <laughs> 
And if this was done before or after the ice fall formed, could it be evidence of primitive religion, perhaps? Okay, Professor. Mitchell leads you in. He seems to know what he's doing. You follow him in with a flashlight, and I'll follow you with supercar. Hey, Jimmy. Yes, Mike? You stay behind and see me into the mouth of the cave, will you? Can I come in with you? Keep clear of the jets, then. And keep Mitch out of the way once we're in there, okay? All set, Mike. <laughs> Go on, Mitch. You gotta lead the way. Stand by. Half boost. <laughs> Take it slow. Lead on, Professor. I'll do my best to take it steady. If it were not so unlikely, I, I should have said that was Supercar's engine. Oh, but I doubt it, surely. I must say, it seems to be getting a little uh, close in here. Supercar's exhaust fumes could be dangerous in a confined space if we kept the motors on for too long. Not to mention the possibility of a few hundred tons of rock falling on our heads. Uh, Dr. Baker? Dr. Baker? Are you all right? Uh, yes, uh, quite all right. Except uh, it's getting a, a little stuffy in here. Uh, Mike, Baker's getting a shot of air. Is there a crack anywhere? Anywhere we could push a tube through? I don't know. I can look for one. Why? We could run an air hose from Supercar's oxygen supply, that's why. Hey, Jimmy. Over here, Mike. I'm doing like you said, keeping Mitch real quiet. How about it, Professor? Can you find a crack anywhere? Y y yes, yes, I found a hole. I don't know if it goes all the way, though. Dr. Baker? Uh, <laughs> what is it? We are going to try to push an air hose through to you. Then we are going to melt the ice and get you out. Melt? The ice. What on earth are they thinking of? Watch for the end of the pipe, Baker. That should do it, Professor. How is that, Baker? Oh, excellent. Ah, real vintage stuff, Professor. Uh, uh, professor. Yes? Did I understand you to say a moment ago that you propose to melt away the ice? Uh, uh, I am not sure I understand you. Uh, uh, with what? Uh, a blowtorch? <laughs> In a way, you could call it that, yes. Mike is going to start supercar's engines and place hot exhaust gases on the ice. So stand away as far as you can, Dr. Baker. Well, I, I fear the maximum distance I can achieve is, uh, uh, Six feet only, Professor. And an oxygen leak might uh, exaggerate combustion somewhat. Professor, maybe you had better go over and stand with Jimmy and Mitch, nearer the mouth of the cave. Certainly, Mike, but be careful you don't leave the engines on too long. Baker is not far from the other side of the ice. I'll be careful. 
Port engine charging now. 7,000, 9,000, 11,000, 13,000, 15,000. Are you ready? Here goes then. Fire one. Give it 15 seconds. That should start something. Right, cut. Ah, no effect. Firing again. some picnic, Dr. Baker. What happened? Well, I'm ashamed to say that it was entirely my fault. And I have been responsible for the destruction of an ice formation that is possibly unique, except for Castanet's discoveries in the Pyrenees. But fortunately, the rock drawings are unharmed. Yes, I, I propose uh, to go back there tomorrow morning and I will take a flash gun and camera. Flash gun? Oh, no, you don't, Dr. Baker. You nearly got killed just through shouting too loud. I hate to think what you could do with an exploding flashbulb. No nonsense. Flashbulbs are perfectly safe. <laughs> <laughs> 